Welcome everybody to another episode of MC Commute. My name is Zach and I'm gonna ride to the office. Today's show is brought to you by Senna, makers of Bluetooth headsets and accessories like the new 30K with mesh technology. Senna supports MC Commute. So if you're in the market for a Bluetooth headset, please support Senna by going to their website or clicking on the link in the description of this video. On today's show, we have got a legendary guest, perhaps one of the most legendary motorcycles of all time, that is Honda's Goldwing. It is 1,833 cc's of flat six power and an 840 pound package. So we're gonna ride to the office like you normally would with a bike like that, right? Uh, we're gonna talk about what the Goldwing's good at and what it's uh, maybe not so good at, and uh, we'll learn what it's like to ride. I'm ready to go, let's do it. Okay, Goldwing Tour. Goldwing Tour, I didn't mention that. The Tour has got the top box on there. That big old uh, luggage case above the saddlebags. Uh, what else, what else we got here? So we got big uh, Nissan calipers, <clears throat> although they're not branded. 320 millimeter discs, uh, which is like sort of super bike spec. The most interesting thing about the front end though is the front end itself. It's this wacky Hasek style A-arm suspension, which you can't quite see from here, but I'll show you guys uh, while we're riding what you can see from the cockpit, which is pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> luggage. It's not great luggage, actually. It's smaller luggage than it was on the previous model. Um, but uh, still quite a bit of it. Uh, the headlights and a pretty wicked exhaust note, I think. Zoom. Very, uh, yeah, very Starship Enterprise. I actually think it sounds pretty good from the cockpit, too. Just my personal opinion. A futuristic face. Okay. Let's get our wing on. <laughs> okay, so there are a lot of things to talk about on a Goldwing. Lots of options and specs and whatnot. Uh, so I'll try to cover the interesting stuff, if I can. Uh, like I said, big old 1800cc flat 6, basically the same as it has been um, for a number of years now, although the engine was redesigned and redone for this model, even though the displacement didn't go up. Also, one of the first things you'll notice in the Goldwing cockpit is um, a bunch of uh, oh, two wheels, right on. Yeah, he gave me a nod. He also is riding a white two-wheeled vehicle with onboard storage and a top trunk. Anyway, the Goldwing cockpit uh, has always been famous for just a plethora of buttons, just <laughs> like an impossible amount of buttons. And there are still a lot of buttons, if I'm honest. Um, but it's definitely been simplified. And it's got this um, big old color screen right in the middle, which is pretty cool, I think. The G-Wing also has ride modes. Um, I have it in tour, appropriately, I think. Uh, there's also a sport, an economy, and rain. Um, I prefer tour. I don't know, it just seems like it offers the best of the engine. The sport mode is just like a little bit uh, excitable. <laughs> and the bike has a crap ton of torque. Uh, it makes a little under 100 horsepower and it makes uh, something like 105 foot-pounds of torque. But um, I put a dyno graph um, on the website with a little description and such. Uh, it's worth clicking on because the dynograph is very interesting to look at. The torque curve is sort of mind-boggling. <laughs> it just, it makes all of the torque almost right away. It's pretty shocking. And that's good for the Goldwing Tour, which weighs 838 pounds with a full 5.6 gallons of fuel. Um, that's obviously not a light bike. One of the reasons it's got those honking 320 millimeter brake discs and big six pot calipers and stuff because um, it's a big heavy bike um, so having lots of torque is good especially when it's weighed down and by weighed down I mean full of luggage um, and people which is what it's designed to do 5.6 gallons of fuel might seem like not very much um, for a bike this size and designed to go such long distances and it is less than um, the outgoing model, which I guess is a little bit disappointing uh, to some, 
but uh, range is still pretty good. Um, 200 miles is easy. <clears throat> 220, 230 miles um, is pretty common. So that's like, I don't know, pretty good legs for a, for a motorcycle in this day and age. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing more. I mean, I feel like if I was designing this bike, I'd really want to prioritize tons of gas. Just fill it up with gas and forget about it for a long time. Um, but it shows to just try to make the bike a little bit more aerodynamic and a little bit more fuel efficient um, to get the same amount of range as the uh, previous model had, which they claim to have done. Um, but I don't remember those figures off the top of my head, so I can't say whether or not I buy it. <laughs> I like the way the Goldwing sounds. It's basically a little 911 motor in there, you know? It's a uh, little flat six, and it's got a real raspy kind of tone to it, but it's smooth. I don't know. It's cool. I think it sounds good. I think it sounds better actually from the cockpit than it does being next to one, uh, which says a lot, I think, about the sound engineering that they did. You know, the, they do that stuff on purpose, right? They want the bike to sound cool from the cockpit, so they engineer intake noise and exhaust noise to be audible from where you're sitting because they know the person who's most interested in how the motorcycle sounds, as always, is the person riding it. I mentioned the dash, and uh, I'll need to do a follow-up video on that, really, to in order to dive into it, because I can't really do it all while I'm riding. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. The vehicle setting menu, I can show you at a stoplight uh, at some point, which is pretty simple, actually. Um, but there's Apple CarPlay, um, and navigation and phone linking and that kind of thing which is um, not going to really jump into uh, right now. I can click on navigation though and uh, we can see a little map of where we're going which is usually what I do just for the heck of it I guess even though I don't really need to know what my surroundings are in this particular ride. There's also a radio. Uh, I'll turn it up and see what station it's on. single can't deny me. Uh, which is pretty killer. I'll throw it on before I'm out of here at 12 o'clock. They did oh, confirm okay. that a new album is on the way. No time new album on the way. Or release date, but I'll definitely keep you posted. 95.5, Halo S. Van Halen. 95.5, apparently, that's what we're listening to. Oh, geez, can you guys hear that? Yeah. Uh, blasting music on a motorcycle is, as always, extremely embarrassing, so I would only do it just for a gag. But it does have a pretty bumping system, if that's the kind of thing you're into. Um, mostly, though, the interface is best for uh, linking with your headset um, and your phone, and then you can use Apple CarPlay, which is handy, or just listen to the radio and control the volume from the uh, handlebar controls, which is pretty cool. Watch out, bites! I should have honked the horn. That's one thing the Goldwing's got in spades is horn noise. <laughs> it basically has a car horn on it, which is freaking awesome, in my opinion. Um, I use it whenever I can, but you have to use it sparingly because it's so strong. <laughs> you hear that? Oh, man. It's great, it cracks me up. But that's how all horns on all motorcycles should be. Am I right? I mean, why do, why do motorcycles have wimpy, tiny little horns that go, ooh, please don't hit me? Don't you think that a motorcycle horn should be like extra strong? That's just, I don't know. So I like the Goldwing horn. Good stuff. So let's talk about brakes for a minute. So I'm gonna approach the stoplight. I'm gonna only use the rear brake and not the front brake, just to prove a point, which is um, that the brakes are linked and they're linked quite well. So when I hit the rear brake just then, the center piston of the front six pot calipers also pinched the rotors. Um, so it sort of links the front brake with the rear brake, which is actually really nice and it creates really controlled stopping. And you can, especially in this environment, um, in a, you know urban or suburban uh, environment, uh, you can just use the rear brake all the time and never even touch the, the front lever, which is kind of nice. I still find myself using the front brake um, out of habit, um, but the linked brakes are really nice and that's not always something you can say about linked brakes. There have been ones in the past that have not been good. All right, out onto the Gold Wings stomping grounds, the freeway. And you will notice I adjusted the windscreen. That is the thing that it has, an electronically adjustable windscreen. You can put it way up 
you can put it way down. I like it somewhere in the middle where I can still see over the top of it, but it makes uh, the air nice and clean over the top of my helmet. Uh, it's a really nice feature that any bike uh, that costs nearly $30,000 and is designed to tour should have, in my opinion. The Goldwing also has auto cancel signals, um, but you MC Commute Faithful will know that I love to cancel my own signals. So I turned off the auto cancel signals um, just because I like doing it old school. Now on to one of my favorite pieces of the gold wing, and that is the gearing. I'm in fifth gear right now, 3,500 RPM, and I'm gonna upshift to sixth, and it goes all the way down to like 2,600 or something like that. That's uh, 2,700. Still, really, really good. I don't know why more bikes don't do this. Use sixth gear as an actual overdrive. If it's a sport bike and it's going to the racetrack, I can understand the close ratio gearbox because you want to be on the boil all the time and it makes sense. You can also experiment with cruise control now. Turn it on, on the right grip, press down to set, and off we go, cruising. I guess I don't have much to say about the cruise control other than it's great <laughs> and I recommend it. Ergonomics and comfort, that's something I should probably talk about on a Goldwing. You would assume that they are very, very, good ergonomics and it is very very comfortable and you would be right um, all of those things are true it's a really comfortable bike nice wide seat um, pegs are like a little far forward for my taste I'd like them just a little bit more underneath my hamstring instead of underneath my knees um, but this is a very relaxed bike so I totally understand the ergonomics and uh, yeah a nice like a pleasant reach to the bar you can move around on the seat a little bit you can move forward if you want to be a little bit sportier uh, if you move to the back, there's like a, a little ridge that'll catch your lower back and sort of give you some lumbar support, which is nice. And while we're on the freeway, I'd like to show you guys the suspension working, if I can. Um, hopefully we'll hit some bumps here soonish. Uh, I'm going to poke the camera down in this little cranny here. Uh, I'm going to keep my eyes on the road, so hopefully you guys can see it. But it's really... A pretty cool thing you can see the end of these little struts that turn the front end because there isn't a conventional fork on this machine so here we go you see all that stuff working down there see it soaking up bumps pretty cool hey Zeus Chevy Cruze that's definitely a rental car no license plate frame don't know where they're going Anyway, the mirrors. The mirrors are good, um, pretty sleek. Uh, I could stand for them to be a little bit bigger, if I'm honest, but uh, they are perfectly smooth and um, they work pretty well. I dropped the windshield down a little bit. Um, and while we're at the stoplight, hopefully I can show you guys that suspension. You see it in there? See it moving around? And those little struts are pushing back and forth on the fork. <clears throat> and there's two uh, A-arms in there that allow the front wheel to move up and down and there are a bunch of reasons for that um, one thing that that style of front end gives you is uh, the ability to tune in anti-dive so when you hit the front brakes real hard like this you get a controlled amount of dive in the front end which is uh, a nice feature especially for a bike that weighs many many pounds what it also allowed Honda to do they were quick to point out uh, is move the engine and everything else farther forward so a conventional fork would have taken up a little bit more room whereas this allows the front wheel when it hits a bump instead of traveling in the direction of the fork it travels directly up and down so they could move the whole bike more toward the front contact patch and help with weight bias which is pretty smart I'd have to say Let's see other little uh, gadgets and widgets pouch here for your phone little glove box kind of thing um, should have to plug in to show you Apple CarPlay. This is where the gas cap is, but you can't get to it unless you press this thing over here, which is another little cubby, which holds a button, which opens the gas cap <laughs> um, compartment, which is kind of funny, I think. There's also this little whiz-bang. Come on, there we go. Which uh, diffuses air, I guess, when you have the, the shield up. Um, I couldn't really tell it doing much, but knowing Honda, it's kind of hard to imagine they did it for absolutely no reason. Let's see, what else? Yeah, this is all sort of uh, audio switches, uh, heated seat and heated grips. Um, I do have the heated seat on, 
because why the heck not? Even though it's 62 degrees, you get a little extra warmth on your buns. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, let's see. We've talked about brakes. We talked about the engine. We talked about the dash. We talked about the electric windshield. We talked about the heated seat, mirrors, ergos, cruise control, gearing. What else we got? What else we got? I don't know. People, uh, wait now. Just be cool there, box truck. Let's be cool. People asked about uh, backing it in, which uh, I will attempt because I like you guys and I want to make you happy, but I gotta say, I'm not, I'm not super confident about it. Uh, in the vehicle setting menu, um, which I promised I would show you, uh, so I will do it at the end of the ride here, uh, you can shut off traction control, but you can't shut off ABS, as far as I know. Okay, so moment of truth. 838 pounds of supermoto. <laughs> no, not really. It's uh, got a lot of rear bias. Let's try one more time. <laughs> it's just too controlled. It's too safe, really. All right, because I told you guys I'd show you the uh, menu here. Let's go home. Let's go to vehicle setting. So this is the vehicle setting menu. That's the uh, auto cancel turn signal that had shut off. Suspension preload. Um, you can tell it, uh, you know, how stiff you want the suspension to be based on passengers and luggage. Uh, Honda selectable torque control off. Auto dimmer uh, on the screen, which is um, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so there we go. TC off. Now we'll see what it feels like to goof around with 100 foot pounds of torque. <laughs> <laughs> brap, brap, brap. <laughs> oh. So sliding a huge motorcycle like this around is fun and everything, but it does really go to show um, how well engineered it is. That you can get a big 840 pound bike like this sideways on some slippery pavement and it doesn't feel like just an insane thing to do i don't know it's uh it's kind of impressive i think now the real backing it in we select r for reverse and then we hold this button and then it goes doot, doot, doot. there we go reverse i just backed it in so to speak <laughs> uh, okay there you have it. Gold wing tour. I just took a little commute tour. I haven't really talked about what it looks like. Um, it's a lot smaller than the old gold wing. Uh, just sort of like from a profile perspective. Um, it's sleeker. I think it looks good. I think they did a nice job with the, with the redesign. Um, and even though, as a colleague pointed out to me, it's kind of a risky thing to make the gold wing smaller. It's always just been the king of the road in, in many ways, so. The exhaust note. See, it like, doesn't sound like much here, but like when you're in the cockpit, I almost feel like it's louder. I think it sounds awesome. I dig it. Uh, okay. I really, uh, really hope I covered any questions that you might have about the gold wing. Um, I really did my best, I promise to talk about all the things. So yeah, thanks for riding along on this MC commute. And remember to please subscribe to uh, our channel if you like our content and hit us up on social media and tell your friends and uh, check out um, the links in the description of this video for more information about the bike and sponsors of the show. Thanks again for riding along, everybody. See you next time. Peace.